Yeah, first of all, thanks for everybody being here. Uh, Alex Fritz came from Arizona today uh, to be at MUS. Uh, so he's a, a SAC club member. And I just wanted to put in a little commercial for the club. Uh, all of you can attend our club meetings online every month. Uh, you can go to sac.org. We have a link that you can click open. I think we're still using Jesse for the stream. Is that right? Is that what we're doing at this point? Um, yeah, they have, to, they have to mail me the link. We don't publish it, so we don't get, like, you know, pornographic meetings. Okay, so, so sacvp <laughs> sac at mus.net, is that you for, the, for this purpose? Yeah, they can do that, or they can, they can hit me up on, on Facebook. Okay, uh, so... Uh, uh, that, that's how you can get into the meeting every month. Uh, we're, we're trying to do uh, things like demos, projects, new product news. I was just talking to uh, Michael back here about uh, you know being beta testers for some of his new stuff. And uh, so uh, you know we, we try to maintain an active posture here. That's one of the things I wanted to say because a lot of times you know people meet once or twice a year uh, or have you know no monthly presence at all. We're not like that. So. Uh, when we have, you know, a lot of people doing some interesting stuff uh, with Amiga, and uh, we wanted to invite you all to participate. Uh, today we have a, a good program put together by Bill uh, and uh, and Jerry, who's been, you know, doing all this stuff uh, for probably at least a year, uh, and so we also also have some, you know, very expert demonstrators. Uh, Chris Nelson being one of them uh, has done. Uh, special presentations on soldering and modifications and you know other kinds of things like that that would be of interest to somebody, especially in the classic field. So uh, those are some of the things that we do here at the club and we'd love to have you all come in. Uh, right now we have, uh, we have, a, we have a new uh, membership fee which I think is a little bit, it's $3 more a year than it was. Uh, what are we doing, $15 a year now? Okay, so $15 a year is what it takes but you can come and attend without being a member if you want. Uh, being a member gets you on our mailing list, and it also uh, gets you monthly notifications, and uh, so all the other communications are, are sent to the members. We try to keep the list small, and we don't fill your inbox with junk, uh, and we don't publish the today? list or sell it. So uh, <clears throat> those are things that people need to know these days, because often that happens. Uh, we don't do that with those kinds of things here. So. Uh, again, thanks for coming, and uh, turn it back to Bill, and see what's going on with the rest of the presentations this morning. Uh, it's going to be Matthew. He's going to jump into the Amiga 600 GS demonstration. Uh, you've shown this at a couple other places. Yep. And uh, we should be ready to rock and roll. So Matthew, go ahead and take okay. it away. Okay. Good morning, Ami West. Can you hear me? Yep. All, all live. Uh, this is the A600GS. This is a project that we've been doing for quite a while. Um, uh, it's about a year's worth of work so far. Uh, it's been a long-standing project that we've been uh, first came up with in about 2013. We used to have s some plus. Uh, you might have seen our arcade joysticks, and we had a few concepts of building in a emulation box into into our arcade evolution joysticks a few years ago. Um, but uh, we pitched it to a couple of people, but nothing came of it. So this is an evolution of the project. So uh, what is the A600GS? It's a low-cost game system for running classic games and applications. Uh, it's the benefits of it, the hardware features are it's a small, lightweight, and compact box plugged straight into your television via the HDMI because that's pretty ubiquitous these days. It has two 9-pin ports on the front uh, which can accommodate a classic Amiga joystick or a classic Amiga mouse. Uh, it's got wireless internet, which is great for downloading software, for downloading the system updates. Bluetooth audio option, so you don't have to just go through HDMI audio. You can hook it up to your Bluetooth box, uh, like the sound bars that you get commonly, and uh, you can get the, the sound through there. Um, it's powered by USB-C, so that's 
pretty useful as we found out in our hotel room we just plug it into any USB socket and away you go and it'll power up the software features it supports ADF HDF we've got uh, also a file system uh, format that we we can uh, we're uh, supporting at the moment which you can set up partitions uh, system partition, work partitions, uh, uh, exactly as you want, and load your, your uh, software on there. Uh, save states, do you all know what save states are? It allows you to save a, a game at a certain point uh, and snapshot in, t in time and then resume from that point. So it's, it's quite useful for cheating in games or if you want to uh, uh, bypass all the loading mechanism of a game because Amiga games take quite a, a while to load sometimes. You can download software from the internet or, uh, or install from USB. It's up to you which way you want to do it. And we've got, once you've got lots of software on there, you can search and filter through your, your games, your scene demos, or your applications. Uh, anyone that's got the next 5000 or X1000, you probably have, are familiar with the Amisphere login. That allows you to download all your updates for the enhancer. So we have kept the same system. So it connects to the same server, and it downloads all the the same uh, in the same mechanism, the same uh, with the with the same username and password. And also, we we got plans for Ami Store later on with, uh, on this box, so you can use your Amisphere login to uh, log into Ami Store. The project internally is called uh, Good Stuff, which is a B-52 song, you know, keeping in the tradition with, with the B-52s. Um, luckily enough, it's, uh, it also, uh, the first two letters are good for game system. Um, the main developer is Andy Broad, he's joined us um, as a developer, so he's, a f he's an employee of Amiga Kit now, and he's the main developer behind this. Uh, Kevin Saunders created the great graphics for it. He, he's a great guy. He, he's got some fantastic talents. You might have seen uh, reshoots. He did the game for that, the graphics for that game. Um, and so he, he, his talents are, are, are limitless. Um, Rabbit Hole Computing was responsible for the I.O. board that's built into this, and that interfaces with all the Amiga ports. So we're really grateful for the... For the uh, the help from Rabbit Hole on that. So, the actual hardware, there's two variants. So you can get the standard version, which is going to be, have two gig of memory and 64 gig of internal storage. 64 gig should be enough for most, most of Amiga games. I think there's about 4,500 Amiga games. But you can also partition it off, like I said, and put system software on there or, or whatever you, uh, application software. The plus version's got four gig of memory and it's double the amount of storage, 128. So what you get with it, you get a joypad, it's got the CD32 layout on there. Um, that's used primarily for controlling the interface. There's an optional mouse that you can get with it. And uh, the, the mouse obviously is useful for the applications, which I'll show you in, in, in a second. So the, the applications, P-Paint 7.3, that's the latest version. That's uh, created by Aeon Technology. And also Aeon bought some years ago Octomed, the rights to Octomed on the Amiga. So that will be bundled on it. We also put in Dopus on there, so you can, you can use that as your file manager. And all the files will be in a common directory, so you, you can interchange all your, your creative files between each application quite easily. The compatibility, it uses uh, a custom Aros ROM to, to do the, the booting. Um, we've modified that a, a little. A little. Um, option E, you can add other ROMs, it's up to you. The, these are supplied by the user. Uh, it supports AGA, OCS, ECS, and also RTG. Well, it'll launch with RTG. Uh, the enhancer software, uh, we've developed quite a few uh, commands and system files, and we've backported them to 68K, and they, they, they will feature on, on this system. And there's a brand new icon set as well, which uh, 
looks like looks like this. So that's they're quite nice the icons for us, aren't they? <laughs> um, a guy in Belgium, Steph Stefan uh, B here. So he he did it for us. He I saw him in Amiga 38, and he was really keen to get his to get his icons. On to out for the public, the public to enjoy, you know, and uh, see his artwork. But uh, yeah, he's a great, he's great talent on that. I think. Yeah. So the forthcoming development goals, we've got to implement the AMI store for it. So we got AMI store for the X5000, but we need to get it on this now, and get that up and running. It won't launch with AMI store because otherwise, if we if we Launch with Amistore, we'll never get it out. You know, there'll be feature creep after feature creep, and it'll just it'll end up as a perpetual project. And the save the save state system, I want to get that to an advanced state, so you, you can do multi saves. You've got it's states, uh, and maybe you could tag the state uh, the states as well, so you could say, oh, level one in a game, level three, you know. And you can you can jump between the states. So we want we want to implement uh, an advanced state, uh, states a save state system. Okay, so I'll demonstrate the actual unit itself. Hopefully, it will work. So this is the A600GS. These are the games that are. Uh, Loaded onto it. It's not going to have any games loaded on, but uh, you know it's up to the user if they if they want to convert their games across. At the top, you can if you've got a lot of games, you can actually filter between all, all the games. And you notice because I haven't got a keyboard connected to this, it'll t except a USB keyboard. You can bring up the virtual keyboard, and uh, you can actually filter your games by by typing in um, their their names and. It will just like uh, filter them through. Everything's controlled by the shoulder pads on the joypad and the crosshairs. So you can move this big yellow cursor around and select which games and titles you want. So these are games. There's applications as well. So if you wanted to go into an application, like P Paint, for instance. Very famous application. Press start, and it should load up. Now oh, there you go. There's P Paint, and you can use the mouse and and play around with it to your heart's desire. And then you can. You can load your scene, scene demos because I, I don't know if scene demos are big in the States, but in Europe, scene demos are there's a big following for scene, scene demos. So you can filter by your scene demos. And once again, if you want to start it, start the scene demo and boom, it'll load up. So th this, this demo is in ADF format and it was loaded in by ADF format. But uh, the larger scene demos you can load in as HDFs as well. How do you handle disk switching? That's a good question. I'll show you that. Yeah, that's a really good question. So disk switching, there's a, a menu button on here. So then you would just go down. Uh, if it was a multi-disk, it's not coming up on this. But if it was a multi-disk, it would come up, change disks. You click it, and away you go. You notice uh, if you want to cap capture a screen image, you can do that. And there's uh, there's a storage area inside the the A600GS, so you can capture a screenshot. You can also save to the thumbnail. So if you're wondering how you customize your your small floppy disks on the menu, that's how you do it. And of course, you can save the state as well. So at any point. I don't know the answer to that question. I think we've customized it a bit, but I, I think we might be able to do some sort of uh, conversion utility or something like that if you want to export your save states, yeah. So uh, you can actually e edit all your titles. Um, 
This is, you can add fields like subtitle, author, publisher. You can protect it from being deleted. You can tell it to load from the save state or, or miss the save state completely. Select your, uh, your model for compatibility, because that might be important. Um, and the category that it lives in, and that's set by the filter. And then down here, you can speed up the ADFs and add the ADFs in this section here. So that goes back to your multi-disc game, and then it'll detect a multi-disc game and allow you to switch discs between it. The, boot, the B icon means it's the boot uh, disk. So if you've got multi, lots of disks and you want to specify the boot uh, floppy, it'll, it'll show here. So it just... So these are the uh, the other sections. So I, I, I mentioned that there's an AmiSphere login. So if you connect it to the internet, you type in the AmiSphere username, your password, and in the top right-hand corner, the GS will tell you if there's an, an update to download, a system update. And it takes a few seconds. It'll update it for you automatically, restart, and uh, you, you've got the latest firmware. So we've used, as you can imagine, we're in, in development, we've used this quite a bit. And then uh, the other things that uh, you can set your audio so you can play through HDMI audio or you can play through Bluetooth audio. These are the audio levels. Change your language, your keyboard, connect to a network. Connect to Bluetooth, so this is all your Bluetooth devices. And your system set up. Any, any questions? <laughs> yeah, we haven't got a browser yet, but... Uh, Uh, yeah, um, oh, I'm not sure on that, I'm not sure on that, but it, uh, there, there is a little bit of latency when we're using the Bluetooth, yeah, uh, with, but, um, uh, yeah, uh, on more complex games, I'd imagine that the Bluetooth will have a, l a small bit of legacy, um, latency, but, but we'll have to, we, we are optimizing this at the moment, so, uh, yeah. Oh, so the actual device here. It's a very small box, very lightweight. At the moment, this is a prototype. We don't have the, uh, the front and back uh, bezels because I had to jump on a plane before get, uh, with the, this prototype. These are the two DB9s, so you can hook up your regular Amiga joysticks and mice to it. And then you've got your USBs and Ethernets and HDMIs on the back. Yeah, so it is quite portable, good for a hotel, come, jump in on a plane, go to a hotel. Is there a limit to the, uh, the Bluetooth? I mean, can we hook up a Bluetooth keyboard, mouse, or like a PS5 joystick and just go to town? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, HID devices like USB keyboards, mice, they're going to be supported. Um, my son said he's got a PlayStation 2. He said, oh, can I hook up my PlayStation co controller to it? Uh, we're going to implement so you can customize the, the actual buttons and keys because I think that's, that's going to be something that's forthcoming. But uh, yeah, that's, that's very much in the plans, yeah. When you are running an, an app like that, you leave data on there. Yeah. You can then create the image and then save it to an ADF file, like a virtual ADF file. Do those show up? Uh, what, what we've got at the moment is uh, we've got a, like a common area, like a work area, like a work partition, think of it like that. So when you're in Octomed or P-Paint or Dopus, everything goes to that common area. And then you can inter-share the data between all the applications. Okay. And then maybe we can use directory Opus to save to a virtual floppy. Copy that That's an interesting idea, yeah. Well, I'll, yeah. You want to bring stuff off this 
Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, I'll take that. I, <laughs> I'll take that idea and uh, yeah, I'll run, I'll run with that idea. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah. You could do that now. Yeah. Yeah, you could do you could do that now because uh, let me just show you. Um, so if I get out of this. Right, yeah. So the, the question was uh, about porting uh, cross data from, from a USB flash drive. So you would do that by uh, using the, uh, hooking up a USB flash drive into the back of this. And then you can actually go, we've got like a little file, file manager. I'll show you here. So this is doing it outside of the the environment. So you would it would appear under here your USB flash drive. You go into there and you you could copy files back and forth. You could do that with Dopus, but um, uh, with Dopus itself, that would be on your system or work partition. So you would, with Dopus, you would just. Uh, yeah, uh, sh let me just bring up Dopus for you. Oh, hang on, starting this again. <laughs> so, and in the, behind it, and there you go, and there's there's your Dopus. So. Uh, yeah, you would have all your files that will be uh, show in the common area, and you just put your USB in, it will be mounted on the right hand side or the left, and you just copy it across like you would normally you, uh, do in Dopus. So you can actually make directories as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like on a regular, yeah. So uh, we, uh, we've got uh, a documents directory, we've got a paint. Uh, pictures directory, we've got a sound directory pre-made pre and then that all lives on your work partition and then you would just create any other directories that you want and uh, just mess around with it as you, as you wish. Sorry? Um, at the moment, yeah, I've got one. Let me just show you the edit part. You can't actually view it at the moment, but uh, so here, this is what Dopus runs from. So there's a partition called HDO, and that's that's with the Aros files on it, and it'll load that and load the and uh, load the Dopus files after that. So uh, the on some of the other ones, I, uh, let me see if I can find the work partition for you. <laughs> P-Paint's probably the best way to show you this. So P-Paint. So P-Paint has two partitions. So you've got your system and your work. So the all the applications run from system, and then the user will then save all their data files into work, and then they can export them out of the out of the GS or, or bring in new files. It's up to them. Yeah. So the question about scan li scan lines, yeah, uh, scan lines is an optional extra later on. Uh, we wanted to, we will implement it, uh, and. Um, at the moment, we 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 got so many features to to add. You know, it will will come. It'll be pushed down from Amisphere through the through the updating system. Are there any options for controlling like aspect ratio and scaling? Yeah, yeah. Scaling and everything? Yeah, that that will be implemented just okay, before so just before release. Yeah. At the moment, you've got four by three, but yeah, one of the options we want to do is sixteen four uh, sixteen nine, isn't it? Uh, so you can see the borders when I started the games. You could see see the borders on the games. Yeah. Yeah.
can you scrape like cover art from the system? Like is it some sort of built in? Uh, like a screen grabber, that type of thing? Oh, do you mean the change the backdrop and things like that, or theme it, or? Yeah, so say, say you dump a bunch of games on it, right? Is yeah. Sort of built in script to script that oh, that? right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's something we're working on at the moment, like an import export. Yeah, yeah. That, that's an idea that we're we're just working on at the moment. So there's uh, we've got a ton of ideas, <laughs> you know, to add to it. It's, yeah, and, and the, the the project, it's, it could go in many different ways. But the, yeah, that's something we've thought, thought about and we are, we are going to implement, yeah. yeah. So, uh, any further questions? Yeah, so the big idea, I guess, is the $4,000 question, is $4,000? No, it's not going to be $64,000, no. <laughs> yeah, it's likely to be less than $150, so it's going to be a low-cost box, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the idea is to get something that's low cost because, let's face it, all classic Amigas these days, the, the, the price of them is just going through the roof, isn't it? They're not affordable. And then you've got to get a scan doubler and then you've got to hook, hook, find some way of hooking it up to HDMI television, which is, is always a challenge. <laughs> By uh, the re the release date, <laughs> <laughs> the release date, yeah. <laughs> I just I think we're just a couple of we uh, months away from from re initial release, and then there will be optional extras that people want. We'll push them down when they've got them out in the field. So. No, no, I think after Christmas, it'll be after Christmas, but very shortly after Christmas. Hopefully for Amiga Islands, maybe we'll, we'll have it ready for Amiga Islands. So that's the next big show. So, so uh, any further questions or that's it? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, um, just to mute your microphone okay. and we'll get that uh, fixed up. In about 20 minutes, we should have Michael Schultz of the EMU 68K project dialed in via Zoom. Um, after Michael, uh, Dan is going to give us a quick presentation of his new game um, that he talked about at DevCon that he's working on. Uh, after that, I think we've got lunch, followed by da, 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 Doug Compton at one. Yep, that guy. Uh, an interview, uh, uh, interview with Dan Resources from Lemon Amiga, and then I'm going to show connecting a uh, OS4 system into a Windows box, but all the ways you can interconnect the machines, exchange data, mouse, keyboard, all, all, all things I do. I thought it'd be fun to kind of show. I might show how to play YouTube videos, just to remind people. A um, little tutorial on some OS4 stuff. So that's the plan. That's at 4. And then at uh, 4 o'clock, we um, run the raffle. And then the show wraps at 5. And I'm home at 5. I leave at 5.30.